I'm Nate Eaton, live on Broad Street, where hundreds of people have just left the John Marshall Courthouse. I tried to think of a creative way to show you how much snow we've had. We've used rulers before, but I present to you the Kit Kat O meter here on 8 News. We've got a mini bar, we've got the regular bar, of course, the king size and everybody's favorite, the mega size. Already snow starting to accumulate when Bob and Maureen McDonald walked out of these doors. They came over here to Broad Street where two cars were waiting. Bob got in one. Maureen got in another. The Johnsons say they've never had any complaints about Tucker and didn't know that there were any problems. How can you let them use the bathroom that's running on the sidewalk? That's nasty. Human waste leaking out of a house onto city streets and sidewalks. A Richmond mother says that is just one of the problems she is facing with her rental home. Now she contacted us saying no one else cares about the hazards that she and her children face every day. All right, new senior reporter Nate Eaton is live at that home. He went looking for answers. Yeah, Christina, we're here at 1800 Boston Avenue. This is the home we're talking about. When the family moved in three months ago, they had no idea there'd be so many problems. A warning for you tonight. Some of the images you're about to see are disgusting. I say you're using a bathroom and it's going straight on the floor? Come on now, that don't make no sense. Lolita Bossaw can't believe her neighbor, Cherry Ann Figaro, has human waste running from her home. You flush it, you use it, you come outside, you see all the tissue and all the human waste coming from under the house and it's running into the road. Cherry Ann took these photos and says this is just one problem she and her five kids have had since they moved here in August. From the fell off. The front door just fell off. The front door, the hole, all the screws, everything fell off. Not only that, but bathroom drains upstairs are clogged and water's been sitting in this tub for months. Then there's the front porch with rotted wood beams holding the roof up. When you move that, that porch is going to fall in. Yeah. This is how this porch has been ever since I moved here. If anyone in the house wants to use the one working bathroom, they have to physically move this heavy door in front of the room. That's because it fell a few weeks ago, almost hitting one of the kids. You pay rent? Yes, I do. Never missed a month? Never miss a month. Cherry Ann says she's called the property manager and sent this letter two weeks ago. I have never heard nothing back from them up to this blessed day. So I gave them a call. It's Nate Eaton with Channel 8 News. The man on the phone told me he couldn't help me but would call me back. Cherry Ann hopes to hear from him too. Tell me if they will let allow their family to live like this. Need to find her somewhere to go or come here and fix what need to be fixed. Back out here live, one of the posts on the front porch rotting away. Now, Cherry Ann tells me that late tonight, a worker from the property management company came out here and took a look at the plumbing underneath the house, and she's hoping that that'll be fixed. Fixed. We still have not heard back from that company requesting a comment. And now the city of Richmond says that they will send out an inspector tomorrow to check on these problems. Reporting live in Richmond tonight, I'm Nate Eaton, 8 News. Even though he will no longer be House Majority Leader, Congressman Eric Cantor says he will remain in his congressional seat. Doctors say this virus is so powerful that alcohol-based sanitizers won't do a thing. In fact, they say don't even bother putting it on your hands. Rather, the best thing you and your kids can do is soap and water, and a lot of it. It's a day every parent looks forward to seeing your child get that college diploma. But a family and crew wasn't sure their dad would get to see that day until a surprise phone call. All right, new senior reporter Nate Eaton spoke with the family about that bittersweet day. It almost leaves me speechless. Priceless photos taken on a day Brittany Inge and her father Bob. It meant a lot to me and my family. We'll never forget. All these people did this for just me and my dad. Her dad, who has stage four lung cancer, was sent home from the hospital last week to say goodbye, two weeks before Brittany was to graduate from Longwood University. They told me that time was short and hopefully I would be able to make it. Bob's waited five years to see Brittany graduate on a day he he never thought he might miss. This is one of those things as a father uh, you want to see from birth. Last week, Longwood University found out about the Inges, and out of the blue, one of the university's vice presidents called Brittany. They wanted to offer me um, a special ceremony in order to 
let my dad see me graduate. I had no idea Lung would, would go out of their way. And uh, it takes special people and special organizations to make this happen. So Monday morning, five days before the scheduled graduation, Brittany, her dad, and family members gathered here, and she received her diploma from the president of the university. Everybody was dressed up just as if it was a normal graduation, except there is a lot less people. As Brittany received her diploma, her dad had one thought. I made it. I didn't have to go as long as I thought I was going to have to go. Brittany and her family say they owe everything to Longwood for making a special occasion even more special. I would hope that other universities and other organizations would take heart in this. And the fact that they made like this miracle come true is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And Brittany now has her degree in elementary and middle school education. She's job hunting in hopes her dad is around to see her become a teacher. A grand jury handed down those indictments earlier this afternoon here at the Henrico County Courthouse. I hold them right here. David and Grace Gallagher weren't sure what to expect. They were absolutely gorgeous. As they walked into the UNOS Art Gallery and saw this. Cameron has so many friends. Tile after tile. She continues to give. Row after row. She's so strong. Look what she's done to everybody. No. Each one telling a story about the Gallagher's daughter, Cameron. All these people have painted all these wonderful representations of Cameron, and they've, they've shared her message. That message lived life to the fullest after hers was tragically cut short six months ago. The 16-year-old Freeman High student had just finished the Shamrock Half Marathon in Virginia Beach when she collapsed and died. We as an organization knew that Cameron was a donor and we thought what better way to connect her friends and her family to her than through an art project. Over 400 tiles were submitted from friends, family members, teachers, even strangers. And each one of these kids has taken something from Cameron. Grace decided which of the tiles should be displayed on the different panels and now each of the panels will go to one of Cameron's family members. I almost feel like Cameron was, I was her puppeteer. And we just started dividing it up by colors. And then we had, as a family, each made two of our own tiles. So I put those in the middle. The tiles will be on display until the end of October, sharing a special message of love. It's clear here that your life is measured in what you give to people. Family. Hold your kids tight. Just hold them tight and, and appreciate them and love them. And hope. She has touched more people than we may ever in the 80 some years that we may live. In Richmond, Nate Eaton, 8 News. The two men were in a work van when they were suddenly rear-ended by another van behind them. One of the guys got out to inspect the damage and officers tell us as he was doing so, he was approached by a man. New information tonight about the Richmond school board member accused of leaking confidential information of 20 students. Senior reporter Nate Eaton broke the story last night. Teachy Pinkney Epps says she was trying to help a child when she inadvertently released the name of other students. She says there was no malice or ill intent on her behalf, but tonight many say that doesn't matter. It's not the role of a school board member to use that student information and give it directly to a vendor. Even if Teachy Pinkney Epps was trying to help a student, fellow board members say she never should have released confidential information. That's not the role of a board member. Tonight we're learning the leak happened the week of September 8th. Pinkney Epps, who serves on the board's disciplinary committee, is accused of sending student files she obtained in a closed door meeting to an outside Medicaid vendor. That can seeing the student names as well as the the action that we were supposed to take. You do not release information that's related to students. Former State Superintendent Bill Bozier says the accusations are serious and Pinkney Epps could face criminal charges. That's because student files are protected by the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, which requires parent permission to release information. What would you do if a staff member released confidential information to a third party? They'd be terminated. So why should there be any other standard for those who are elected officials? Board can't fire Pinkney Epps, but she can be censured, reprimanded, and removed from committees. We do have a disciplinary committee meeting coming up, and she is not going to be part of that meeting.
Now, parents of those students who were impacted by the leak are being notified this week. The school board plans to discuss and possibly take action against Pinckney Epps at their next meeting. Pinckney Epps did not want to go on camera tonight, but she tells me she has assumed responsibility for what she's calling a mistake. Here's where we stand tonight. The mini size completely covered. The Prince size or the regular size almost covered. King size almost completely covered. That mega size is still holding on there, but I bet by morning all of these will be completely covered.